The Potter's Wheel interlude always fascinated me as a child. That lump of clay, apparently featureless, grey, bland, a bit like Cumbernauld Rose. And then, a miracle, the skilled hand of the potter discovers the beauty, the form, the shape, and finally the colour hidden inside. Every place has a special distinctiveness, a story to tell. There are special features in the landscape, the heritage buildings, the people, myths and legends. Sometimes those special features are hidden. We need the expert hand of the potter to help to uncover the diversity and distinctiveness. Skillfully, the cultural planner will engage, involve and empower local people, often the hardest to reach, so that they become the potters. They discover the special nature of their place, take a new pride in it and celebrate that pride, expressing it to the outside world. In the workshops this afternoon, we're going to hear examples of projects where this kind of cultural planning approach has been employed in Govan, in Nielsen, in Leith and in Preston Pans. And our tendency is to regard them, these approaches, as wonderful, unique, innovative. As Eric Arts describe in their European research publication, Creative Europe, beautiful flowers in the desert that bloom but then fade because there's no context, no national policy or systems thinking to support them. If we look through the camera lens in close up at any one of them, we can identify key ingredients. There are local people in the lead. There are artists involved. Creative processes that engage wider and wider sections of the population. There are, there's cross-sectoral interagency working practice. There's support from key stakeholders and policymakers in the public sector. And like the business of discovering the beautiful piece inside the clay, these processes are messy. Mistakes will be made and wonky results sometimes ensue. Through the close-up lens, they look delicate, one-off, unique, small-scale, and impossible to roll out or replicate. But if we allow the camera to pan back, here in Govan, for example, we see there are little initiatives with those same key ingredients dotted all along the Govan Road. In Linthouse, the Love Project has developed the Gallery, its Continental Cafe and year-round cultural events programme. Elder Park is next, Tam spoke of it earlier on. The Fairfield Farm, homegrown tomatoes this summer, all driven by local people and organisations under the umbrella of the Local Housing Association. Travelling along the road a little way, Govan Workspace is developing the Fairfield Building with office space and a museum of shipbuilding history. Then it's the Portal, a stretch of Govan Housing Association shops this time, converted into artist workshop space, a hub of community filmmaking, storytelling, ceramics, music. At a stone's throw away from the Portal is the ancient spiritual heart of Govan, where we're sitting today. The Pierce Institute, a legacy of our proud shipbuilding heritage, adjacent to our ancient spiritual centre, Govan Old Parish Church and its medieval churchyard, links to St. Kentigern's, Constantine and Columba, birthplace of the Iona community and home to the famous Hogback Stones. Together, local people and organisations are exploring ways that we can not just lobby for a culturally sensitive approach to planning and policy at Govan's historic heart, but actually take it forward ourselves. So with the aerial shot, we start to see that these are not simply one of fragile blooms. There's a growing critical mass of glorious bud sprouts and full-blown blossom trees of gorgeousness. 
And these projects have a positive impact on health, worklessness, addictions, education, green space, learning, every single government priority. In fact, a Scottish Government social return and investment audit, audit carried out during 2009 demonstrated that every pound invested in this way of working delivers £13.68 of added value, social added value. That's almost £14 of return for every pound spent. You're going to hear some similar stories from my colleagues in the west and in the east of Scotland. There can't possibly be any barriers to the development of these projects, can there? We're all searching for the answers that these projects deliver, aren't we? The old ways are patently not working, and it's exactly these skills, properties and outcomes we need to build the Scotland of tomorrow, is it not? Surely the policy to deliver results like these in a sustained and sustainable way is simple. Invest in them. Get behind them. Support them to the hilt without ever taking over or disempowering the local initiators. It's simple, isn't it?